At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming one of our very own practitioners, Riv Sakratov, and she is not only a healer, energetic healer, she does, uh, she is an alien channel she does work with trauma she's i mean pretty much like you know you mix all the modalities together and bada bing bada boom and we're going to be talking about a few different things today including on learning harmful um harmful uh practices that are going on in the new age Mm. colonial practices in the new age as well as using aliens for in healing work and uh you know so many different things right you (laughs) know and you're going to be working and teaching psychic development with us Mm -hmm. and so we're going to be diving into that and you know how it works we have a couple different subjects but we see where we go and how it flows but most off we're going to be learning about riv and who they are and all of the above yes so welcome hi thank you for having me i'm excited thank you for being here uh, so I, I always like to start out, you know, really allowing people to get to know you so that then we can get into understanding <laughs> why we're listening to all the other stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's interesting and fascinating to me of how somebody even ends up on the metaphysical new age journey and really diving into not only looking and, and exploring different topics in the new age realms, but also like doing healing work on others. Mm. And, and so where did your journey start? Oh boy. Um, I would say like my personal journey as a kid, I had a ton of like weird psychic experiences without knowing what they were. And I was always like super into the supernatural. Like I would beg my mom to stay up and watch Charmed every Sunday and all that stuff. Um, so I feel like I always had this sense of like, there's something more and I would believe in everything and I just really desperately wanted to be like special in that way (laughs) Um, and then I after I graduated from college I was like living on my own as an adult for the first time and I was like kind of going through it and I found this spiritual podcast um, and they offered retreats so I went on a retreat and it was run by two ladies it's called inner bloom and one of them is a psychic medium and one of them is an EFT practitioner and on the retreat like i had a reading with the psychic medium and she was like you know you can be a psychic medium too like you have these gifts you've had them for many lifetimes Mm. and i was like what i'm special like i'm (laughs) i always knew it like yes so um yeah i immediately like after the retreat i worked with one of the people that was there that was a psychic medium to like do mentee mentor type of thing and honestly from then it kind of you know like it kind of just snowballs like I, was, I started meeting all these different people do trying different modalities and yeah so i i really i have like a lot of gemini placements i have adhd so like i want to just like learn as many things as possible so i started learning um, energy healing. I got Reiki certified. Um, I did like psychic medium stuff. I started giving readings like on TikTok and stuff because it was like during the pandemic. Um, And yeah, since then I've kind of like with every new skill that I learn, I just find a way to like mix it together Mm -hmm. in a modality that works. And I originally started my business doing crochet, (laughs) which is like totally out of the left field. Was it like crocheting like intuition messages or no? (laughs) No, it was like crocheting tops, but then I would put like third eye on it or like crochet like the tree of life in it and things like that. But also I'm like really into Halloween. So I would do like ones with like bats on them and things. And I just felt like the more I was doing like the psychic readings that I wanted to do more than just like a psychic reading. I wanted to help people like heal through things in the more intimate, like long term. Um, And my business mentor was like, so write down everything you want to do. And I wrote down all the stuff. And then she was like, okay, seems like you want to do like some form of like coaching or something for people. This is what you're drawn to. And so, yeah, I started kind of like finding my way, figuring out how that looks and learning more things to be able to support people. Um, Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I, since I do inner child healing, 
Yeah. I did this big visualization with my inner child where I got to visualize what my energy looks like if it's not in my human body. And my inner child was very much so at the forefront of like wanting to help other people to not go through things that I experienced alone or not to like struggle mm -hmm. or suffer through things that I experienced. Um, like definitely very motivated by like injustices mm -hmm. in the world type of thing. Okay. So you have this advocate inside that is like, I, you know, want to help others not suffer. I want to have equality. I want to have balance. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but it, it's interesting how, you know, Riv and River, like your name, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you just kind of went with the flow. And I know that some people that watch, uh, they get mm -hmm. and they've, they've dove into different understandings of the different modalities and everything like that and we just threw out so many and even when I was introducing you it was like okay there's a, all of these different things but mm -hmm. basically you know if we sum it up is you really help transform somebody's life through yeah. giving them guidance working with different modalities for healing and helping hold them accountable through some coaching right and yeah, so it's definitely. like ushering somebody through the process of change yeah yeah big words for me that I like to hold is like empowerment mm -hmm. I love to help people feel empowered to know like they do have the gifts I'm not like this special person who can only heal them type of thing and liberation like just I find what a lot of clients need is just that permission to be like you can just do it your own way you don't have to believe in this this is true for you you know like not their yeah. abilities just like soar yeah <laughs> I love it. And just like your ability soared when somebody did that reading mm -hmm. and said uh, um, in front of you, I'm like, you know, you got this in you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, amazing. And so then I have to ask is where did the communication with the alien start? Yeah. Because. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun thing. So my mentor that was a psychic medium, she channels Arcturian aliens. So when I was kind of like coming into this, that was like a very like normal thing, I guess. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is a thing that could happen. And I know in like a lot of new age spirituality, there's like the star seed indigo child. Mm -hmm. I was like looking into that and like finding people who do stuff like that. And I would set time to connect with my guides when I was working at my space. And I just always felt like there was some kind of like extraterrestrial being that would like stand next to me. And I was a little bit scared at first, like, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I wanna work with this, this thing that's here. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I've just learned on my journey, if, it's, if I'm feeling it, to like trust it and go with it. And um, the more fantastical it is, the easier it is, cause it's more fun for you. Yeah. So yeah, I started working with them, like asking them to guide me. And they've actually really been integral with like my energy healing practice. Okay. I started doing just like regular Reiki work with people like remote clients and things like that. And um, I asked them to like help me because they're really, really adept at like helping heal and move energy. And like the word that I've talked to many other practitioners too, and the most common word is like tinkering. Like they see it as like tinkering on the human body and they mm -hmm. can just like fix all this stuff. Um, so I asked them to like show me stuff to guide me in that. And from then it's kind of been like, I, I kind of vibe with their energy more so than like working with like angels or, or spirit guides in a way because um, or deities even because with aliens it's like very like practical and matter of fact I feel like when you work with deities you have to establish the relationship give them like offerings and stuff and with the aliens it's like if they're here to help you they're here to help you <laughs> like that, that's just kind of how it is and I like that it's like no frills like when I need you I need you um, yeah, so they've shown me so many different things and then they've been pushing me to like step more into my abilities of like channeling um, and just like being weird, being okay with like being weird and stuff, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and, and I love that you were saying that, you know, some people they do, you know, angels or archangels or deities or yeah. whatever, you know, and then you find the resonance with aliens and that the that's the beauty of all of these different realms. And I mean, mm -hmm. people could be listening to this and thinking that we're cuckoo or woo woo, <laughs> but you know, like there's so much more that we don't see and so many other like experiences or vibrational energies that exist on different planes that are beyond our physical 
normal apparatus of, of, of mm -hmm. connecting, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I often say for the person that's like a little bit more skeptical or a little bit more like having a hard time digesting some of the things, it's like, think about like a dog whistle. Like we don't mm -hmm. hear it, they hear it. Mm -hmm. Like, and so that's, it's still a vibration of sound that is happening, but because mm -hmm. of the way that their eardrums are shaped or how, whatever they can do, they can actually take in a little bit larger of a radius of sound than we can. Yeah. Well, what else is going on here? I mean, like, you know, because I don't know, we see like this much of the light spectrum, yeah. like literally, like yeah. if you look at the light spectrum, we see like a sliver of it. So, I mean, and that's just visual. That doesn't even mean. So I think that a lot of people, when they start to develop these gifts or these extra senses is they start to fine tune their antenna to be able to take in a little bit more information, mm -hmm. like a dog whistle, right? Yeah. And so you can work with these beings that are always present, just like that sound frequency is always can be there and, and displayed by different, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that like I, having been a professional psychic, it's like I've already had that initial, like the skepticism is gone because it's like, oh my gosh, this stranger on the internet and I knew things about them that how could I have known this and even with energy healing it's like I don't know I'll tell the client after I just had a recent energy healing and I was like I don't know I my alien guides were like guiding me to do all this intricate stuff and then they had me put it back into your knee and she was like oh I've been having knee pain and now it's gone it's like how could I like that is crazy so I feel like the like you said like the threshold is like widening where it's yeah. like oh if I can do this then this other stuff must be there yeah and it just keeps on growing and growing and growing and like you know and that's through different practices or different modalities or even just fine tuning, right? You know, if a musician it continues to play, they can understand the different subtleties mm -hmm. and the chords and the strings and they can play a little bit more smoothly. Yeah. It's like beginning playing the, that song versus five years later playing the same song and I bet you it sounds different, mm -hmm. right? You know, and if that's true of that, what else is true for everything that we do, right? Yeah, of course. And then, you know, one of the interesting things on like on the topics we always talk about, we have uh, we have topics that are discussed, but I mean, we, we kind of go with the flow, but I do want to touch base on one of the topics that you wrote down on the harmful um, yeah. uh, healing in, in the colonial new age world and stuff yeah. like that. If you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, came in i feel like a lot of people come into the new age spirituality realm we're looking for answers i was at like a low point in my life so we're just looking for someone to like help us solve whatever we feel like is not working in our life and in that there's like a lot of people that share like what works for them or their own beliefs but i found that like there wasn't like a depth or a deeper um, responsibility of like where did i learn this from and if i'm teaching it to somebody can I share where it comes from, the origins, why I'm teaching it? And so we just kind of assume, like the most common one I, I've seen a lot of people talk about and I love to talk about is like, like smudging with white sage. Like we just think like, oh, if you need something cleansed, you gotta get that. And that's the only thing that you can use to like cleanse your space. Um, and that's part of that like harmful, like smudging is like a sacred practice for Native American cultures. And so like we're not even doing the actual act like the sacred ritual of smudging, but we just like call it that and like white sage itself is like a sacred plant. It's also becoming endangered and all these other things. But we just think like that's the only one that I learned. So I have to go with that. And that's kind of like a like a micro example of mm -hmm. that, what happens in the industry. And um, so once I started to learn as I was like on my journey, like sharing things, learning things, I became like really aware and I was like, what? There's so many other things we can do. Like, I didn't know this was harmful. Like, how do I unlearn this? So I definitely started like um, changing like who I learned from, like making sure I was learning from different people of different cultures, like POC um, and other types of practitioners to, to broaden that because I really found like new age spirituality is kind of like one facet of colonialism. Like a lot of the ideals are similar um, to the ideals of colonialism that we like live in in America. Mm -hmm. And once I started to see that, I was like, oh, okay. Like I really have to be way more discerning is like a huge skill to have. Like anything I learn, like how we learn in school, when you're doing a book report, have three to five sources. It's like anything I learn, I look it up, I fact check it, where does it come from? I look at who wrote the article or who's telling me the thing that I'm learning from. 
And um, a good part is also like, if it resonates with you, I love to teach people that. Cause like, I might learn a thing from somebody else's culture, but I'm not part of that culture. And if I ask myself or my spirit guides or my ancestral team, is this something that's for me? Like, do I need to like work with this? Like most of the time it's like, no, you have like your own practice from your own culture and you're gonna be way more connected to that. Mm -hmm. um, and that part really came through cause I am Jewish. And so I wanted to learn about like, what are Jewish mysticism practices? Mm -hmm. Like Kabbalah is like a huge thing. And a lot of that is culturally appropriated in different magics and things like that. So I started to see more from that point of view when I was learning about my own culture, like, oh, this is taken away. Oh, I could use this instead. Um, there's so much, like, <laughs> I could talk about this. Yeah. I don't know if, like, any questions are coming up, but. Yeah, no, but I mean, there's there's so many different ways to cleanse that energy, right? Yeah. You know, and there's, there is different belief systems. But I am, I, you know, I think that as long as there's a, there is a respect and an understanding of how it serves, you mm -hmm. know, and if it resonates with the person, right? Yeah. You know, and it's done, you know, I think that that's the beauty of where we live in this this time and this place is that we can adopt from different cultures and different things and, and take things as a more global in the same way that we have an internet and across the cultural, like, you know, I mean, we have coffee that comes from, you know, a different place and tea and this and that. And sometimes you have a meal and it comes from seven different continents and it's on one meal and one table. But we're able to have this more like global type of thing, but still embracing the origins and the traditions are important because maybe they're missing a step or two within the process. Like you said, you know, yeah. if that's, a, if that's the only thing to use is, you know, to sage and there's there's not even the tradition or the intention behind it is it as effective as maybe doing a little bit of prayer and a ritual and bringing that in and you know and and having that whole process actually come forth instead of just a part of it right which i think comes into the training and the understanding at the deeper levels right yeah and it's also about like when you learn from other people you can hear from them like their perspective of like this is a closed practice. Like this culture has suffered from colonialism, from capitalism, and they're trying to hold on to their culture that was like made to be erased, made to be illegal or things like that. So like being respectful of like, yeah, is this something that I need to do? Like maybe I could find that like alternative thing and be respectful and like unlearn these word choices or these practices that like it might, feel like cool to me but somebody else of the culture might not like appreciate that and stuff like yeah. that yeah absolutely and as long as I think of things done with respect I think respect is on on the on the foundation my great great grandfather was an Indian chief so I don't think that there's being around and doing sweat lodges or you know and rituals and things along those lines is done in the practice or sage done in the right way you know if we're talking about that is seen as something that is a tool that they at least from my my origin is seen as being like we want people to heal you know yeah. we want people to use this tool but we want it to d be done in the right way yeah you know? yeah and i think that's where the disconnect is of like not knowing the origin not knowing the intention the proper way to do it and with colonialism it's tied to capitalism so a lot of people just want to make money so they like sell you a cacao ceremony or like like a sweat lodge thing and it's like they're oh, not yeah. taking that time to learn and do it like traditionally or respectfully and and things like that so it's like really questioning like who you're learning from you don't want to end up in the, that lodge like that <laughs> happened in Arizona where everybody ended up dead yeah like something like that right <laughs> you heard about that one right yeah yeah you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. A lot of natives that I work with or, or do lodges with and stuff, they always say that if somebody's trying to charge you for a lodge, you should probably walk away, that it is something that is done for the purification of the, of, mm. of the, the soul and the purpose and a love donation is often uh, mm. accepted or an offering of tobacco or so like that. Yeah. But the money isn't the, is, isn't the means of the exchange, at least in, the, in that tradition. Yeah, yeah, everybody, every culture every, has every, their own. Everybody yeah. has their own, <laughs> but you know, like there was, you guys uh, look it up on the internet, there was a few years ago, somebody did, did a lodge in, oh. uh, 
in, in Sedona and uh, had all these people come, charge all this money, and then uh, people died of like suffocation or heat stroke or whatever it was, yeah. but I, I forget how many people. You, you yeah, I definitely, and I've seen like, they've parodied that too on some TV shows too. So I totally know what you're talking about. And it's, and I think that that's why I love to help people with empowerment because we're so disconnected from our intuition and from what feels good in our body that when we are faced with those new yeah. information or those types of scenarios like if you're like maybe I should do that sweat lodge like we aren't able to know like this is a no for me or like my my intuition is like telling me like let's not do this or there's another way we can do this and like I can feel empowered in making that decision yeah which brings us into the next topic of the psychic development and some of that teaching so that you can be that own deciphering force within your own life, right? Yeah. So we're, you know, I mean, I know that that's something that you're stepping into, teaching yeah. more of that. Yeah. You know, and how helpful that is for people. Do, oh, you, yeah. wanna, do you wanna share a little bit? Cause I mean, you're gonna be doing like a series here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, in October. And then again in January, I'll be doing like a four week class on this. Um, and I've taught other people too, like more in like a one-on-one -on -one, and I wanted to offer like a group um, option because I think it's more fun to like practice in a group um, but yeah like one of the things uh, I guess one of the skills that I notice I have is like seeing patterns and how things don't work and saying like okay this is a, how we could fix that and that's kind of what I was pointing out is like one of the things I realized like people are not feeling like they're empowered to make these decisions and that they do have like special abilities or they can trust themselves or or connect with their body and listen to their body because I feel like the intuition is highly tied to our body and our emotions mm -hmm. like um in my class i cover they're called the clairs um which is there's like six of them and it's kind of like how our intuition works and they're all basically tied to like the five senses it's like seeing hearing tasting smelling feeling um and knowing and so to me it's like of course it's tied to our body because that's how we experience it is through our body um, but yeah, I love teaching psychic development and intuitive development because everybody has intuition, mm -hmm. everybody has access to it. And I feel like in our modern world, a lot of how we're brought up societally or like in our personal stuff that happens is to like taught us, teaches us to like disconnect from it and yep. to not trust it. Um, and that was like a big thing for me that I had to go through was to like, I, I just quieted my intuition and I had to like build that connection and say like how do I listen to you how can I like honor it and and know how it works for my unique specific body because I see intuition as kind of like a language and everybody has like their own unique language mm -hmm. so it's hard to kind of just be like I feel like on the internet people are just like this is how it works and it's like whatever works for them yeah and which that is super important and that's why you it's it, it's great that you talk about all of the different clairs, right? Yeah. Because oftentimes people feel that oh, if they don't hear things, or then they they're not intuitive, right? Yeah. Or they don't have a psychic gift or an ability, right? Or a sixth sense. But what if they have a sense? What if they can, um, you know, see things? What yeah. if they can, you know, uh, taste or smell, which is a very very lower percentage of the population yeah. but some people get that smell and they smell and they can describe like a freaking pie coming out of the oven and the and the person's like oh my god my grandma made those types of pies and you yes. know like but it in and, and that is is a lot of times and that's where i find that within this work is you know the beauty of people going through their own healing trauma mm -hmm. and and then wanting to step out and help yeah. is beautiful because they go through it and they want to help however the paradox of that is they seem to have done it through a one charted prep path and so then they take that on and kind of uh, relay that to like the diet myth right right whatever mm. worked for somebody on a diet fad diet they start to preach that to everybody it's like oh no you can't eat this or you have to eat that or you gotta yeah. do this and it's like okay well you know every body and body is different mm -hmm. and so different types in the way that you know our our chemical reaction for food processes different well mm -hmm. in the way that we can sense and interact with the world we're different and mm -hmm. so like and what works in the step-by-step -step approach for one person to get that transformation somebody else might take it a different way but it doesn't mean that they don't get there 
yeah. whether they don't have access to it, right? Yeah. And that's, so that's one of the things that people have to watch out for, and I think that goes back to your colonial um, mis yeah. uh, uh, um, misusages and things like that, is that so people will kind of like just share one thing, mm -hmm. one vertical when there's this expansive knowledge, and maybe that one vertical works, right? And maybe that one vertical resonates. And however, what if there's something else? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think like there's something when you decide to like take up like helping others or being a leader in your community about knowing that, that like you can't just teach from only your experience. You have to like educate yourself and like help educate other people. And so that's why I love teaching it. Like there's so many different ways that it can work and like allowing people mostly what I'm doing is just like giving them the tools and the understanding because I feel like with intuition it's like a black box type of thing it's like people don't know how it works I like I remember when I first was you know a kid like the only thing you ever see a psychic on tv is like they're clairvoyant 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 yeah, like yeah. that's all they ever talk about oh and no so, when people could when people want a reading are they clairvoyant yeah and what about you know i mean and, and it comes from a lot that people don't know exactly yeah right? and i'm like well no they get intuitive hits or sometimes you know they hear things mm -hmm. or they this or or you know they can channel through messages which is a completely different type of skill yeah. set you know and uh and but that is that that's that you know intuitive means you know, seeing things. Yeah. Well, some people walk into a room and that's not even their first representational system, you know? Yeah. Like I've studied NLP and like, it's like, it's like it, you can you can have a group of people walk into a, a, a store or a room and somebody notices the sound of the AC or the other mm -hmm. thing. Somebody might notice the textures of the walls and, and how it does it feel warm and cozy. Somebody else might notice all the details and see and whether, you know, it, it, the, the view where the presentation looks appealing, right? Yeah. You know, but like they, even when you're walking through life, not everybody is seeing things. Yeah. You know, yeah. and sometimes, you know, you talk to somebody, I have a, one friend that they don't notice or see anything really, and it can be something right in front of them, but they hear everything. Mm. And so if I pull them into like, oh, with the sound or something like that, or, you know, and I get caught up in my language of visuals and I start talking in, in auditory sounds, you know, and they're like, oh, that, that resonates with me. Oh, yeah. I can, that rings true. And, and yeah. I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> so why would it be different for the, the psychic senses? Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that whenever I work with clients, I feel like they come in, they're like, I'm not even sure how psychic I am or how strong my abilities are. And like, I've seen like seven examples of them like proving it. And then all I do is like share with them, this is how it could work. These are examples of how it could play out for you. And they're like, oh, I have like all of these. And I'm like, exactly, see, like you're intuitive. and. So I love giving the tools to feel mm -hmm. empowered. And then I really love like my, I find like my intuition works like very multifaceted. I feel like it's kind of like the Gemini. Like if somebody's like, how can I do this? I, like I'll ask and it'll be like six different ways. Cause I love to give people options mm -hmm. to choose what resonates with them, to try out, to see what resonates with them. And in the classes that I teach, we have like tons of like hands-on like practice. So it's like you're in a safe environment where you can like feel it out and see. And it's so, I just love that moment when they're like, wait, I got this right? Like, there's no way I could do this. I'm like, yeah, you're psychic, you got it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And then that's the planting the seed and then watching that, you know, just like the one medium for you, planting that seed and, and sharing and then bloom, 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 blossom and seeing yeah. where where things develop, you know, six months, a year, two years down the line. is is people can really develop that. Yeah, yeah, because I think there's, like having a deep connection or an understanding of how your intuition works or feeling like in control of it is gonna help you in every aspect of your life. I think some people, there's a lot of like, uh, it needs to be a specific definition. Like I've heard like the God-given gifts, like you think you need to be like a psychic, but you know, um, making art like that is part of like intuitive like you can just see the art in your head and then you want to make the art or like knowing how to mix together cooking spices intuitively like there's so many different ways that our intuition comes out in our life and our skills and then also just feeling like I can make decisions better I can move through the world and know what's best for me your life is just going to be um a lot easier yeah. <laughs> and I love that 
Uh, yeah, that no, that's uh, you know when you were talking, it made me think of. Have you ever watched the show Forty Four Hundred? No. Okay, so it's like these people get taken and brought into the future, and they come back, and there's forty four hundred of them, and they all have mm. different abilities, mm -hmm. right? And so when you were sharing, it reminded me of like an episode I seen recently where one of the person's abilities is they could. Um, when they wrote and they were writing a screenplay, the movie was an actual uh, real life event. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that they could, you know, while they were writing, they got the ideas or the information or the different things. But I mean, that's one way, you know, yeah. that's a little bit different than what people think of. Yeah. It's like, you know, maybe they get that information like that. Maybe they get it through their dreams. Maybe they get mm -hmm. it through, you know, uh, painting or other things. And it's like that picture is, provides that intuition or that, that guidance, right? And so it's, uh, you know, just like we are so faceted, so is the way that we can receive additional information yeah yeah i love doing it and also i feel like there's multiple ways to grow your intuition too and so i like to give like a class opportunity when i work one-on-one -on -one with trauma healing with clients like that's a huge way to like get your intuition i wouldn't say online because i feel like it's always there yeah but with our trauma we can like stop listening to it. And so if we're like learning to retrust ourselves and to heal that relationship with our body and the parts of ourselves, then like our intuition feels like, oh, I can speak up again and I can be heard. And so yeah. you can do it by learning. You can do it by like practicing with like all these different metaphysical like things. And then you can also do it with like doing the harder, like digging deep yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like clearing out things so you can become a clearer vessel, right? You know, yeah. there's a lot of congestion in the pipes the energy that's coming through just isn't maybe as clear the antenna needs a little bit of cleaning off so it can be more receptive right yeah and that can be the impact of trauma or that can be the impact of other different experiences through yeah. time as it you know clogs us up a little bit or, or caves us in instead of letting us feel yeah yeah it was really cool when i had my psychic greeting like my mentor was saying like you've been a psychic in multiple lifetimes but you like got in trouble for it in the past life so you came in with this one like not directly like out the gate online abilities so you have to choose like you could choose if you want to go down this path or not and i think like for a lot of people we think like there's no element of we get to decide in that or we're in control and and i think like when you learn and when you have those tools and skills and words for how it works it really gives you the opportunity to choose like how you want to work with your intuition how you want to work with spirit how you want to go through this life yeah and to what extent you know just yeah. like anything you, know, you can dip your toe in a little bit or you can become like you know learn a couple different strokes sw swimming or you can end up like <laughs> swimming every day and doing triathlons yeah. you know like i mean where do you want to take it yeah right? but I love that you're using that empowerment of uh, and that free will yeah. for somebody. It's like, you know, that it's it's there. Where do you want to focus your energy mm -hmm. and you know, and and the ability to say, here's a whole bunch of different techniques. Which ones are the ones that work the best for you? Mm -hmm. Dive in, use them. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when I first was learning how to like ground and protect my energy. The main common one that everybody uses is like, imagine a bubble, like a protective bubble around you. And for some reason, I just could not like get behind that. Like I always felt like, what if there's a hole in my bubble? Oh my goodness. Like what if it's the wrong size? Like I would, I just would get pulled out of it. And so I had asked like my mentor, like, is there, can we do something else? Like, is there another? And then she was like, oh yeah, of course you can try this or this. And I was like, oh, this is, this is what people need because I feel like when we're trying to do that one example, we're like shaming ourselves or feeling guilt, like why isn't it working? And it's really just like your intuition just doesn't vibe with this. Your body doesn't vibe with it. Yeah, and that's for cool. whatever reason. I mean, you could have had like a bad experience with bubbles in your past. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it, it, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. You know? Somebody has a, I don't know, a fear of mirrors and you're doing some kind of mirror shield, like, you yeah. know, it's probably not gonna work for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, that's good. Good stuff. And so it, with some of the trauma work that you do, you incorporate like a lot of different, um, you know, do you, do you take it and help out with some of the intuition? Is this mostly healing work? Where where do you see somebody that comes through? Because I know that that's one of your specialties is really working with people with trauma. Yeah. So I the way I approach it is like 
more holistically. So I use my psychic medium abilities and my energy healing abilities. What I do is like kind of just create like an energetic safe space for the person. And if they're feeling like stuck, um, I'll hear like what what we should go, where we should go towards to help them. Or if it's like, this might not work because it's too traumatic, let's go somewhere else. Um, but I also mix that with like parts work. So like therapy, um, like trauma informed. I try and be like as trauma informed as possible um, and parts work. So that's like IFS, internal family systems, like knowing that there's like an inner child, which is why I really love the inner child and like the ego and different parts and how mm -hmm. we work together. So I kind of like mix those together. And really what I'm doing is creating that space, asking the right questions, guiding you, bringing up like ideas that maybe you didn't think were available to you, giving you the permission to like really dive in. A lot of it's like visualization heavy um, and allowing them to connect with their inner child, them to speak to the inner child and give me the answers and, and, and not me just like, oh, so this is what's wrong with you. Let me help you fix that. You know, yeah. it's more like, what do you feel like what's coming up for you and really allowing them to have that space. Um, I work with clients more long term, like once every other week type of thing and yeah. allowing them to have that space once every other week to tap in and to be there for themselves and to show them like, you know, this isn't wrong what happened or like you didn't do anything wrong. Like, let's heal that piece. Um, but what I love with adding like the psychic and energy healing is like, number one, I can get there quicker like mm -hmm. I can help see the root a lot faster than like a traditional talk therapy yeah um and I feel like it's a lot more fun for people because <laughs> we're not just like talking about things in the human world we're like giving their inner like I have clients who their inner child created an entirely new planet that they can live on because they didn't like the one where they grew up so it's like really yeah. allowing them to take control of like their inner world and doing really cool like intuitive stuff and and having like my abilities to support them in the best way possible that's great yeah yeah it's we've i've seen so many like i've had people who don't really vibe with like traditional therapy and like they want like the because they're more intuitive and so like they take to it really quickly because they under they know i understand like parts of them yeah um and i've seen like the growth like from people like i had somebody they came for like wanting to feel better about family connection and now they realize like they're psychic so like they have their own business yeah, now it's amazing. and like yeah there's so much like I, the possibilities honestly are limitless like you can not know what it is that is weighing on you and we'll figure that out together or you can know like this thing just is bothering me and i realize this pattern um and i can't even like count like people got like better with like emotionally eating or or money or yeah. they got better with family and then just themselves feeling confident. There's li like endless stuff. Yeah, so it starts at any one given thing. It can go into this ripple effect. Mm -hmm. You're really shifting and changing and transforming them from the inside out. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, when you, can't, you can't hide from somebody that <laughs> is intuitive and psychic picking it up, you know, where sometimes <laughs> people gloss over areas mm -hmm. where they they don't even talk about certain things, right? Yeah. Uh, and because they try to avoid it, and that might be the core that needs to be addressed, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, you can kind of just go right there and say, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, yeah. <laughs> and I think that when people are working with people that are a little bit more intuitive, they they know that. Yeah. You know, they, they know they can't hide. Right? Yeah. And so you say a couple things about their life, and they're like, oh crap. Yeah. This person already knows me, so <laughs> yeah. I might as well be open because whether I say it or not, they're going to know. So, you know, and it causes them to be honest. Which yeah. Is one of, and, and face something, which is one of the first processes of healing. Yeah, because I think that, especially with inner child healing, a lot of people think like, oh, I don't, I don't know what that is. Or like, I, I don't have anything really particularly bad that happened in my childhood. But like anything that happens in the earlier stages of our lives, like it's gonna, that pattern is gonna repeat if we're not like addressing it. So some people might be like, I just don't like what's currently going on in my life. And we do that trauma healing together and it turns out it goes back to like some point. So always, yeah. always going back to a point. <laughs> that point just becomes this ripple effect. And this, yeah. it's like a little like weed seed gets planted and that continues to grow. And you know, it's yeah. like, oh, I'm cutting this off over here. Well, what about that? What, yeah. What about what about that? Yeah, and I can see that. That's like how you were talking about like the intuitive psychic people are like 
that one word that you said stuck out really, really hard for me. Let's go more into that part, you know, the part that we're avoiding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So doing these classes, workshops, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, of course, people can find you here. Mm -hmm. And do you have a social media handle, other yeah. stuff that you can share? So people can follow, get that insight or knowledge from you through the ethers of the internet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so on social media, on TikTok and Instagram, I'm under Riv Sakertoff. Um, I also have a podcast yes, called Witchy yes. and Weird. Um, we're on Instagram and like on all the you know podcast platforms. I interview different people, much like this podcast, and we talk about spiritual stuff. Um, and then I also make products as well. Um, my on Instagram, that's called Occult Accoutrements. Um, all of them are linked in my bio. You can find everything on my website there. Um, we sell we sell their products at both of the locations as mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah. But of course, you can support directly too. You know. Yeah, whatever. definitely. Yeah, come come by if you want to see them in person here. That's always a good thing to smell it in person. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where I am and I'm like pretty available. So if you have questions or anything, feel free to DM me on any of those social medias and I'll get back to you. Beautiful. Make sure you check out their podcast. I think it'll be great, especially if you're seeking a little bit more of this type of content, content and, you know, dive in, support, like and subscribe uh, down here below. And, you know, if you're listening to this, on an audio platform, please go and check out our YouTube because we're trying to get the visual one up and going. Mm. You can see both of us, you know, that way. And there's also, we do some shorter stint, um, clips that you can share on whatever platforms you wish and get just the juicier parts of this conversation. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, Thank thanks. you. Thank you for sharing and being here today. <laughs> um, till next time. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.